The Haas team has a shipping problem. That's right, even Formula One teams have their packages delayed. Their delivery got stuck in Istanbul, just days away from the next round of preseason testing. But it's not just any package, it's their cars, equipment, and everything they travel from race to race with. So how does shipping actually work in F1? How many drivers travel by private jet? And how much would it cost to travel to every race on the calendar? Stay tuned to find out. Firstly, this is not the first time for Haas. Last year, Haas had a similar problem. Toward the end of last season, shipping delays meant that the team couldn't get started working on their cars until Thursday, just a day before the first session in Brazil. The delays were because of bad weather in Mexico, and a total of three cargo planes were forced to wait until the skies cleared up. The delay was only 24 hours, but in the world of Formula One, that's a lifetime. Now, it's happened again. Haas has had a delay to their cargo shipping after the plane was stopped in Istanbul due to technical problems. This is another bit of bad luck for the team that has already lost its main sponsor, Ural Kali, and its driver, Nikita Mazepin, because of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Haas team boss, Gunther Steiner, has said that because of the delay, the other teams have had a two-day advantage in preparation. In preseason testing, where teams are trying to figure out how to get the most out of their cars, two days is irreplaceable. This just goes to show how important shipping and travel are for Formula One. So how does it all work? Next, precious cargo. How bad is it to move house? Normally, you need the help of friends or family. It's hard work. Now imagine that you have to move every second week for about nine months. Oh, and you have to put everything in very specific places every single time. Well, welcome to the logistical nightmare that is Formula One's global tour. The packing and shipping that Formula One teams have to do after every race weekend are simply mind-boggling. Let's start with the teams and their major asset, the cars. Formula One cars are not transported as you see them on the racetrack. Instead, each is carefully taken apart from the engine, brakes, and suspension to the the front wing and steering wheel, everything has to be packed away and accounted for. Car parts and tools get strapped into specially designed cargo containers with as many safety precautions as possible. Some of these parts are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, so any loose objects will be costly. And even though the cars might look light when they're zooming along the track or get launched into the air in a collision, all the parts add up. Each car has a whopping 5,000 individual pieces. And even for a smaller team like Haas, the cargo comes in at a weight around 34 tons. For your European races, all of this is mostly transported by road, but for flyaway races, it all has to be shipped by chartered airplanes. Now, shipping the grid, Formula One itself also has a lot of cargo to send. Not only do they need to transport technology, machinery, and catering facilities, but also all the equipment needed to broadcast races worldwide. It's all packed up and shipped, just like the cars. This includes cameras, computers, microphones, and furniture. Just days after an F1 race weekend finishes up, the traveling circus will be up and running in a different part of the world. Formula One's official logistics partner is the global shipping company DHL. They have been in partnership since 2004. DHL is the largest logistics company in the world, so they know how to handle F1's shipping needs. They use ocean freight, air freight, road freight, and express delivery to make sure that everything arrives on time. This is a big operation, and it uses a lot of fuel. This is why together with Formula One, DHL is committed to transitioning to climate-neutral logistics up until 2030. 30, and DHL has just signed, announced an extension to that deal. This partnership is essential to getting Formula One around the world to 23 races in 21 countries. The company is so important to F1 that each year, DHL presents the Fastest Lap Award to the driver with the highest number of fastest laps in a season. How many Formula One drivers own a private jet? And how much would it cost you to fly around to every race of the season? Stick around to find out. Next, the paddock. Just like actors, the drivers each have their own RV to use during races. They have their own space so that they can get into the zone for racing. But the team also has its own motorhome, which is a temporary building inside that paddock used to host drivers, the team, and special guests. Assembling the transportable modular buildings takes a professional team around 36 hours to complete. A grid is put down underneath different modules to form the ground floor. Then fittings like chairs, tables, air conditioning, lighting, and TVs are installed. An outdoor terrace is put in for guests to enjoy the weather and find Finally, the bar and VIP area. When they are finished, they look like permanent buildings. Some look more like hotels than buildings that have been put up in a matter of days. Unsurprisingly, to get anywhere close to the motorhomes takes some serious money. For a Red Bull Racing Team paddock ticket at the Australian Grand Prix, it costs over $6,000. In Monaco, you can expect to fork out over $9,000. It's a little cheaper to watch the race on TV with a pizza. And it's not just motorhomes that have to be constructed. For every new race, a customized kitchen has 
to be shipped, unloaded, and rebuilt. The catering staff for Formula One can range from 250 to 1,000 people, depending on the size of the race. For food, this means buying a ton of beef fillet and up to 3,000 lobsters. But how do drivers get from race to race? Formula One is the most luxurious sport around, and what's luxury without a private jet or two? Drivers in the most prestigious motorsport in the world don't fly around in economy class like the rest of us. They want their own space, and they want to go fast. It all started with Nicky Lauda, using private jets to travel between races. He loved it so much that he ended up going into the business and creating several aviation businesses, and many F1 drivers have followed in his footsteps. Lewis Hamilton used to own a bright red Bombardier Challenger 605, which cost him 25 million pounds. He then sold the jet, which was apparently related to his environmentally conscious outlook. The F1 superstar is a vegan and has spoken out about the amount of pollution that meat, travel, and lifestyle cause. Fernando Alonso, the Spanish veteran of F1, owns a private jet too. The two-time world champion has a Dassault Falcon 900 to get in between circuits in style. Buying a second-hand one of these will set you back around $8 million. Reigning world champion Max Verstappen is part of the club too. He owns a $16 million private jet that used to be owned by Richard Branson. The Falcon 900 EX jet costs over $1 million a year just to maintain, but to travel from race to race on the F1 calendar, it seems like it's the best way to go. Next, an expensive addiction. If you want to tailgate the F1 calendar, it isn't cheap. The global tour that F1 goes on is brilliant for the sport, but it makes it hard for fans to attend in person. For the lowest cost tickets to the Australian Grand Prix, you can expect to pay around 200 bucks, but that doesn't include flights and accommodation if you're not from Melbourne. The higher end shoots up to almost $4,000 for tickets in the Champions Club. For Monaco, the most famous race of the season, it's worse. To watch the whole weekend, you have to pay over $900, and that's just the entry level. The price of the high-end tickets is not even listed. But let's say you have some time off from work, and you are a die-hard F1 fan. How much would it cost to fly to every race on the calendar? We've run the numbers, and it's pretty shocking. To fly economy from London out to each weekend will cost you a massive £8,271, and that's just flights. Then you have to pay for tickets and accommodation as well. Did you know how much work went into Formula One behind the scenes? Have you been to a Formula One race and seen the motorhomes for yourself? We want to know. Leave us a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.